Hi, Body Massage. We're back with the lesson five and part four of the Lawless Fallen Angels, where we continue to cover the scepter shall not depart from Judah, right? Um, and this is where we get it from Genesis chapter 49, verse 9 through 10, where there's a prophetic uh, words being spoke over the descendants of Judah, right? Specifically, our forefather. And we're specifically covering some of the descendants of Judah and how they were integral to uh, helping the medical field, okay? Now, you'll see I just got a brief list. Like I said, the, this lesson and the next one after it is going to be very short because I'm just covering descendants of Judah, men of Judah and women of Judah, who are not necessarily who are aware of who they were, um, according to the word of God, not all of them, and some who may have had insight. Um, I wanted to mention the first one over here, George Washington Carver. Okay, he's known for hundreds and hundreds of inventions uh, of regarding the peanuts. So um, he also, as far as the medical field specifically, I want to point out, that he left a whole legacy, all of the money that he earned while living uh, to begin Tuskegee University. He went through such hardship and trials in his life, losing all of his uh, family, nearly all of them who were uh, in, under slavery. Um, you can go and research his background. I might can find a video that speaks where Dick Gregory speaks of him. Uh, he never had a legacy of having any children because he was what is known in our present day and time. Well, what we knew of in biblical time, uh, one of the last in the own um, eunuchs. So he didn't have any children to proceed. And there are those in the beast system who try to tarnish his background and say that uh, he was homosexual, but we know for a fact that is not true. Um, this is a part of the B system trying to cover up actually who George Washington Carver is and was and the trials that he went through. But through the blessings of the Most High, I pray that he shall um, gain the blessing and did from Isaiah chapter 56, verses 4 through 5. Okay? I believe he should have a pillar. And he's going to have an everlasting name. As we see decades after his passing, his name has been carried on through different schools, high schools named after him and the honorable things that he done in order to start Tuskegee University. I want to mention briefly another way in which the beast system tried to tarnish and destroy the legacy he tried to leave through that university. Look up the Tuskegee um, experiment. When we talk about injustice against the poor, the needy, and the fatherless, and specifically against the descendants of Israel, if you look up the Tuskegee experiment, you'll see how the beast system used some of those descendants to think that they were helping, I guess, the medical field do research by uh, intentionally injecting and intentionally not medicating uh, African-American men. Uh, giving them syphilis, which they passed on to their children and probably their wives also, okay? But um, that was the beast system trying to tarnish uh, what he did, which was honorable and leaving a legacy for Tuskegee University in order to orchestrate it and build it and start it. We have a person here named Vivian Thomas, okay? He was a gentleman, black gentleman, who um, performed the first in history, open heart surgery. And he was the person who did experiments on animals, you know, pigs, and had mechanical machines that he pieced together in order to help uh, perform the first open heart surgery successfully, okay? Um, he was under someone, you know, black, uh, the black population uh, was not allowed to benefit from their inventions. There was a law against that. Anything they did or any invention they created had to be under their slave master or under the umbrella of, uh, of a white man or something, okay? So I want you to be familiar with his name, okay? These men, 
Ben Carson performed the first successful uh, separating conjoined twins. Okay, so there's a lineage in Judah in which these men also spoke when they spoke at university and were able to speak up about their past and what they went through, called out the injustice of the medical uh, field. So, and let's look over here. You know, there's not a lot of women of Judah that are mentioned in the medical field because once again, we were not allowed to uh, be able to go to schools or universities um, and which for us and our people with the rich heritage that we have from days of old, we knew a lot of medical things, right? It was only when uh, the system came along with a way to monetize universities and colleges uh, in order to so-called approve the credentials of saying that we are officially uh, uh, deemed a medical personnel in the field. But way of days of old, our women had to be midwives. You know, we had to carry out procedures in order to uh, allow our, our people or our next generation to be born. Because coming over here through the transatlantic slave trade, and I'm also sure in Africa, there was no so-called hospital facility. But they did have a structure of midwives throughout history of times of old, of biblical time, of where they had uh, refined the, the way in which women gave birth in order to save their lives. You'll find out today, due to injustice, that a lot of uh, black women uh, have high proportion, disproportionately lose their lives when they go to an actual hospital in order to have their babies. So um, I just put this under the umbrella of midwives because we don't know the names of all the midwives or who began it here in America. But we know the women of Judah are very pivotal in, in helping to usher in the birth of the next generation. Um without accolades that are given because their history has been uh, covered up. And speaking of hidden histories, um, I wanted to point out the fact that the term computers, that word that we get today, if you look at the movie, many of you probably already have called Hidden Figures. And the terminology computers came from women who, uh, black women who were allowed into NASA in order to calculate the trajectory of, of of, of the, the propulsion of the actual space vehicles that were headed off into space, okay? And so the terminology computers came from these ladies, and I'll mention three of their names that were highlighted in this movie, Hidden Figures. One was named Dorothy Vaughn. One was Catherine Goebel. Well, and then there's another one named Mary Jackson, Okay. And I thought it was so adorable at the end of the movie when they were saying that the terminology or where I heard it and looking at the history after I was introduced to the movie, that the term computers came from them, right? Because they could calculate mathematical equations to and refine it to a T that um, computers were named after them, that phrase, because they computed calculation mathematically. Now, I also want to point out a lady named Henrietta Lacks. There's a movie called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks that uh, Oprah helped to produce with her money to highlight the fact that this lady um, who passed away of cancer, her cells, the medical field was looking for cells to replicate in order to make groundbreaking uh, a medical research for new medicines to help cancer patients, burn victims, uh, people in the who are dying of AIDS have been assisted by just her DNA, her cells. It was hard for the medical field to capture DNA sequences that could that proceeded to produce cells after the death of an individual. But amazingly, hers kept producing and regenerating cells. And at the foot of this lady who they initially, the medical field lied and said she voluntarily gave her cell and donated them, no, it was just taken, okay? It was taken because her cells were able to reproduce and continue to generate over time. And there were various, hundreds upon hundreds and hundreds of medications and different uh, particular therapies that were made based off her genetic uh, sequence. They 
I don't know if they ultimately finally have paid the family, but this is a part of what Oprah and others were fighting for, that they be able to pay the family and her next generations that follow behind all the billions or a portion of the billions that all of these medical, uh, uh, this medical industrial complex is made. All of these pharmaceutical companies have made the profits they've made because of course they were not looking to share that. I want to just point out this fact real quick that even in the medical field, uh, the descendants of Judah are used even through their legacy, those who have passed on uh, to call out and for other descendants of Israel and others who seek justice, uh, even in the medical field, to lay a platform, the foundation of. This is what they were called forth to do. Well, body on the side, this is the end of this brief lesson. As I always say to you, may Adonai Elohim cover and surround you and your family, shield and protect you all, and envelop you all with his shalom. Peace. Goodbye.